Hello guys, Danny here. So in today's video, I've got the unboxing of the Intel Nook. This is actually the second video in the series on the Intel Nook. If you want to view my first video, I gave a quite a detailed overview why I picked the Intel Nook up and what the reason was behind that. Um, to just quickly sum it up in this video, um, really quickly, if you don't want to watch the first video, the reason I picked up the Intel Nook was it was a cheap computer I could use for a media um, PC in the living room to watch and stream videos on the internet and also from my NAS. Um, so this is a bare bones PC, so you basically need to buy some other parts to get it up and running. Um, so we're going to unbox the, the Intel Nook and also I'm going to put it together all in this video. So I think first of all we'll get into the box of the Intel Nook and see what we get there. As you can see it makes a cool Intel sound when you open up. I was quite surprised when it did that um, and really cool at the same time. So as you can see I just put the power supply off to the side and also here we've got the Intel Nook which we'll have a look at in a minute. Also we get some instructions basically how to um, put everything together um, which is quite handy actually really detailed and in colour so this will be handy if you're not sh quite sure um, what you're doing. Um, just giving it a quick scan over it looked pretty easy so I don't think I'll need it. And we've also got this piece of paper here which I think just basically goes over some of the um, parts you can use with the Intel Nook if you're not sure. Um, didn't really need to look at that if I'm honest. Then we've also got this mount for uh, mounting the um, Intel Nook behind a monitor. So that's pretty cool. You can all, almost make a monitor into a computer. A bit like an iMac type thing, an all in one. So here we've got the Intel Nook. So you can see it's pretty small. It reminds me of something like a Mac Mini or something like that. Um, it's got a really small footprint. Um, I would say it's a smaller footprint than a Mac Mini, but maybe a little bit thicker. But really cool device um, for the money. So in addition to picking up the Intel Nook, I also needed to pick up an SSD drive for it, which went for the 128 gigabyte crucial one. And the reason I went for this is because I'm going to just mostly be streaming from my NAS and also the internet. I don't need a huge amount of storage, so I thought 120 gig was pretty decent. Um, I also picked up some RAM. This is Integral RAM. Went for this just because I couldn't get Crucial RAM at the time, um, but Integral heard of the brand, so I went for that. Eight gigabytes there. Also, we've got a Wi-Fi card, which also got Bluetooth. I also picked up some accessories and an operating system for the Intel Nook. If you'd like to see more about that, then check out the first video, the annotation on screen now, or check the link in the description below. So now let's get the Intel Nook opened up and get some of these parts installed. As you can see, on the underneath of the Intel Nook, there is four screws. Um, once I've unscrewed them, I should be able to get into the casing. So there we have it inside of the Intel Nook. Um, the bottom piece doesn't have much attached to it, but on the top part of the case, you can see you've got pretty much the whole computer, the motherboard, etc. Um, so we have a little closer look. So inside here, you can see we've got the um, slots for the RAM, also slots for the Wi-Fi card, and also the SSD. Pretty simple now from here on in, just uh, basically slot everything in. There's a few screws and that which need to be undone and tighten back up but pretty simple so first of all we've got the Wi-Fi card here which we'll install and um, you get a few screws there as well but we don't need them in fact so the first job is to remove this screw just about where the Wi-Fi card goes and um, this screw is for keeping the Wi-Fi card attached to the motherboard so there's no way it can come loose so now let's connect the Wi-Fi card um, obviously you just make sure you've got the um, prongs as it were lined up once you have slot it in if you're not sure you can always look at the instructions and now I just need to make sure I've tightened it up with the screw I don't want this obviously coming loose at any point in the future um, as you can see as simple as that one thing I nearly forgot to do when it came to the Wi-Fi card was connecting these two wires and these two wires are for connecting the Wi-Fi card to the case the metal casing um, because the Wi-Fi card uses the metal casing for an antenna so quite important to connect this if you want um, a good strong signal when it comes to Wi-Fi. So just remove the tape and also the plastic around the ends of the wire and connect it to the Wi-Fi card. So as you can see here there's two little sockets on the Wi-Fi card and don't think it matters which wire goes into which socket. Um, it's a little bit fiddly, um, takes a little bit of patience. Um, got to push quite hard down on the on the actual socket to get it to connect. As you can see there, you heard it clipping into place. And also we'll do the other wire. Um, yeah, I almost forgot to do this, which would have been quite an error, because obviously my Wi-Fi card possibly wouldn't have worked 
all worked very well. Um, it's up to you at this point what you do with the wires. I decided to just move them out of the way. Didn't want them getting caught on anything. So next up I've got to remove this other screw on the motherboard which is to hold down the SSD. So as you can see there I've removed that and it's quite simple once again. Just make sure I've got the uh, prongs lined up correctly. And there you go, the SSD is now connected to the motherboard. And now I can hold it down with the screw so there's no way the SSD will come loose inside the Intel NUC. So I've installed the Wi-Fi card and also the SSD. It's time to install the integral RAM. Um, as you can see on the motherboard, there's two slots for RAM. I've gone for eight gigabytes here. Um, I'm not sure what the maximum the Intel NUC supports, but I thought eight gigabytes would be more than enough just for streaming video. So I decided to put it into the bottom slot. You know, I could always um, put some more RAM, RAM in the um, Intel NUC at a later date if I feel like I need it. To be honest, I don't think I will, but we'll see how it goes. So there we have it, I've completed the Intel NUC. Um, next, I've got to obviously install the software, which I will talk about in the next video. Um, but this was a really easy build, pretty much anyone can do it. So I definitely recommend, if you're wanting a cheap PC, what's quite small, then this would be a good option. Um, in the next video, I will talk a little bit more about the software, and also kind of the pros and cons to the Intel NUC, any um, issues I ran into, and just my final thoughts on the whole thing. So be sure to check out that video, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.